Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're continuing the adventure, IS Naruto's Freedom. Huge shout out to the amazing author. Check out their details in the description below. Want to follow along? The link's right there for you. In this session, we'll be exploring chapters 9 through 11. Don't forget to smash that like button and drop a comment. Your engagement helps us out with the algorithm and means the world to us. All right, let's jump into the story. Naruto, Maya shouted as she watched the blonde fall on the screen. He had been about to take out the silver gospel when his IS had a total system failure. She could only watch as he was hit by hundreds of laser grenades. She screamed as she watched him fall. Shifuyu watched her assistant and stayed silent. She too was worried for the blonde as he had taken a lot of damage. His system failure was unexpected and they had no way of restarting his system from their side. She turned away from the screen and saw the Bane looking at him. Tears had started to stream down the redhead's face. Shifuyu walked over to her and placed a hand on her shoulder. Tabane turned and started to cry into Shifuyu's chest. With Cecilia and the girls, Cecilia watched as Naruto fell. He hit the water and started to sink. Naruto, she shouted and shot toward him, only to be stopped by the silver gospel. Damn you. Cecilia lined up her blaster and fired. The silver gospel held up its hand and a shield blocked the attack. Cecilia didn't let up and continued to fire at the silver gospel. Cecilia flew around and fired her blaster as fast as she could. The silver gospel dodged most of the attacks with ease. I'm going to destroy you, she shouted as she fired, tears streaming down her face. She charged toward her target and pushed the barrel of her cannon into its chest and fired. The silver gospel flew back and Cecilia continued her attack. She brought her rifle up and began to rain fire down on it. The Silver Gospel had recovered from the attack, dodged her laser blast, returning fire with its laser grenades. Cecilia dodged to the side, but a few grenades hit her leg. She lost a bit of her thrust and tried to correct it, only to be hit by another barrage of laser grenades. She flew back and hit the ground hard. She tried to get up when she saw the Silver Gospel speeding down toward her. Closing her eyes, she waited for the end, but nothing came. She slowly opened her eyes and saw someone standing in front of her. It was Hooky. She held the silver gospel at bay with one of her swords. Get up, she shouted at Cecilia as she struggled to hold off the attack. Cecilia did as she was told and fired a few blasts to make the silver gospel back away. She watched as it flew back, silently studying them. Cecilia watched it for a moment and had a feeling it wouldn't attack. She turned toward Hooky. How you doing? She asked her. Been better. Hookie replied as she caught her breath. I don't have that much shields left, and the others are in worse shape. What happened to Naruto? Cecilia was silent, and Hookie began to worry. What happened? She asked more forcefully. He fell, Cecilia said finally. Hookie saw the sadness on her face. Cecilia, where is Naruto? Hookie said urgently. Cecilia was once again silent, then pointed toward the ocean. He's there, she replied. Hookie could only watch as tears streamed down her face. She held Cecilia. We will find him, she stated as her friend cried. Hookie turned and looked at the silver gospel. First we need to finish that off. Cecilia nodded. I have lost all of my bits and my shields are at 310, she said. My rifle is still in working order, but my leg thruster is out of commission so I can't get into the air. Hookie nodded. It's okay, she said and looked over her own shields. She was at 250 and all of her weapons were functional. You set up a barrage, and I will attack it from the air. Got it, Cecilia said, and leveled her blaster. Take this, she shouted as she fired her weapon at the silver gospel, making it move away. It flew to the side and fired back. Cecilia ran across the cliff, dodging the grenades, and fired back. The silver gospel dodged and was about to retaliate when it dodged a sword strike from Hookie. D. Hookie shouted and charged the gospel. She brought her sword down but the silver gospel dodged to the side and attacked with a laser grenade. Hookie avoided the attack while Cecilia fired her rifle. The gospel dodged the attack only to get hit by Hookie. It flew back and looked at the pair before raining down laser grenades. Hookie passed by Cecilia. Cecilia ran out of land. She watched as the laser grenades came down, throwing her off the cliff. Naruto was her final thought as the blast hit. With Naruto, Naruto slowly sank into the water all his systems offline. Only the backup life support was active. Damn, he thought as he sank. Damn it. Why freedom, why? He slowly let the darkness take him when he heard Cecilia's voice. Naruto, 
She cried as laser grenades rained down on her with no escape. You know, he thought and tried to get to her, but he just sank further and further away. I have to get to her. He tried to move his arms, but nothing worked. Damn it. Damn it. Damn it. Move. Freedom. Suddenly his vision was filled with light, and he smiled. With Cecilia. She waited for the attack to reach her, but nothing happened. She opened her eyes and saw Naruto in front of her, shield out. You're not touching her, you bastard, he said as he held his place. Cecilia watched in awe as he held back the attack with half of his IS missing. He had his shoulder and waist blaster, his wings, and his shield. The meteor was still attached, but one of the stabilizers was missing. He has taken a lot of damage, but here he was, protecting her with all his might. Soon the barrage ended, but Naruto didn't drop his guard. Are you okay? He asked Cecilia, as he watched the enemy. Cecilia was silent, still in shock that Naruto had come. I, I'm fine, she finally said. I'm glad, Naruto replied. I'm going to end this, stay here. Naruto took off into the air as Cecilia looked on. She wanted to stop him and get him away from the battle, but he was gone again. Please be safe, she whispered. Naruto flew up and hovered, watching his target. It was currently dodging attacks from Hookie as he leveled all his remaining weapons. Fall. Naruto shouted and fired. Hookie heard him and broke off her attack. The gospel turned and saw the attack coming toward it. It danced through the blast and returned fire. Naruto dodged to the side and fired back. He watched as the gospel was able to evade his attack and charge toward him. Naruto tried to create distance, but the gospel was faster and hit him hard in the stomach. He flew back a bit and tried to counterattack, but the gospel wouldn't let up on its attacks. Naruto was thrown around and was sent skipping across the water until he reached the beach. Damn, he said as he tried to get up. He looked up at the silver gospel and slowly got up. Come on, freedom, just give me one chance, he thought. Please, I need to protect my friends. It seemed that the freedom heard him, and he watched as the remaining GN drive came back online. Thank you, he whispered, relieved, and looked at the silver gospel. Max output on the drive. Activate full burst mode. The freedom was soon glowing a bluish green, as particles danced around its form. Naruto leveled all of his blasters and started to fire. The Silver Gospel dodged a few of the attacks, but the sheer amount of firepower soon overwhelmed it. It fell a few feet and Naruto charged forward and punched it in the face, sending it flying. The Gospel righted itself and charged Naruto. It sent a barrage of laser grenades at him, which Naruto dodged with ease. He flipped in the air and fired, making the Gospel dodge to its left. Damn, he thought as he missed and charged forward. He brought his fist back and hit the Gospel in the face then fired a barrage of lasers. The gospel was hit by the attacks and fell down a few feet before it righted itself and retaliated with a barrage of laser grenades. Nardo was not fast enough and was hit by most of the attack. He lost his left shoulder armor and his left wing. He floated in the air looking at the gospel. I have to put it all into the next attack, Naruto thought to himself. Please, freedom, let's end this. Suddenly a word flashed across his screen, Razengan. Naruto looked at this in wonder and smiled. Thanks, freedom, he said, turning his attention back to the gospel. Time to end this. He charged forward as particles began to gather in his right hand. They began to slowly spin in all directions and compress into a blue ball. The gospel saw Naruto charging and launched a barrage of laser grenades at him. Naruto knew he could dodge charge the attack head-on. Cecilia watched as Naruto charged forward, wondering why he wasn't trying to dodge. Naruto! she shouted as she watched the attack hit him. She waited to see him fall, but nothing happened. Suddenly Naruto appeared out of the smoke and thrusted the spinning ball into the silver gospel. Raisin Gan! Naruto shouted as he pushed the attack into the gospel. Everyone watched as the ball drilled into the gospel and sent it flying. Naruto watched as it fell and saw the pilot get released from its IS. He flew down and caught her before landing on the beach, set her down, and everyone rushed him. Suddenly a blue blur flew past the group and tackled the blonde. Cecilia straddled Naruto and gave him an angry look as tears streamed down her face. You idiot, she shouted at him, hitting him in the chest. I thought I'd lost you, and you came back and nearly left me again, idiot. I'm sorry, Naruto said. Cecilia just looked down at him before hugging him tightly. I thought I'd lost you, she cried. Naruto stroked her hair. It won't hap. He suddenly stopped and blacked out. Naruto, Cecilia said as she watched his eyes close. A while later, all the girls were standing in the briefing room. 
When the girls arrived with the unconscious Naruto, he was rushed to the medical station. Cecilia tried to follow, but Oromura Sensei stopped her. Go to the briefing room now, she ordered the girls. They all stood there waiting on Shifuyu. Yamada Sensei was in the room and was watching the girls. Cecilia noticed that her eyes were red and puffy, so she knew she had been crying. She wondered why she had been crying, but was pulled out of her musing when Oromura Sensei entered the room. She walked in front of the girls and glared at them. Do you have any idea how much trouble you have caused? She said in an extremely calm voice that unnerved everyone. We defeated the enemy, Rin said, but the look she got from Oromura Sensei shut her up again. Yes, you defeated the gospel, she said as she paced around the room. How did you do that? From what I observed, many of you were out of the fight after a few minutes. It was only because Naruto came and defeated the gospel that you were successful. Everyone hung their heads in shame as they remembered how broken and beaten Naruto and his IS were. Cecilia looked at Orimura Sensai, her eyes pleading. How is Naruto doing? She asked, the worry evident in her voice. Shifuyu looked at Cecilia. He is still unconscious, but overall he is okay, she said. His IS, on the other hand, has been all but destroyed. We are still finding parts all over the battlefield. What's going to happen now? Charlotte asked. Shifuyu looked at the girls and turned. Get some rest, was all she said and they all left the room. She watched them leave before turning back to the hollow consoles. Dial Kushin and Namikaze, she ordered. She listened as the phone rang and soon there was a voice at the other end. Kanoha Industries, Kushin is speaking, said Kushin and Namikaze. Mrs. Namikaze, this is Shifuyu Oromura from IS Academy, Shifuyu said. I am calling concerning your son. She heard Kushin sigh. What he did this time? She asked with an expecting tone. I told him not to prank people when he was there. Oh lords, please don't tell me he was peeking on the girl's bath. If he was, please feel free to beat him. It? Shifuyu tried to say, but Kushina didn't listen. Where's Jiraiya? Kushina asked someone in the background, and Shifuyu heard someone answer. Soon the sound of footsteps filled the phone. Shifuyu heard a male voice greet Kushina before the cries of pain filled the phone. You pervert. You corrupted my boy. Shifuyu heard the sounds of a male getting beaten, till the point of death for several minutes, while Kushina cried about corrupting Naruto. Soon the sounds faded and Kushina's voice came through the voice. What were we talking about again? Shifuyu sighed. Just like her son, she thought before replying. I was calling to tell you that Naruto has been hurt. Kushina was silent for a moment. What happened? She asked her voice barely audible. Shifuyu proceeded to explain the silver gospel incident to Kushina, who was silent throughout the whole. How is he doing right now? Kushina asked. He's banged up, but nothing serious, Shifuyu said and heard Kushina let out a sigh of relief. I will be there as soon as I can, Kushina said. I will wait for your arrival, Shifuyu said and hung up the phone. A few days later, Naruto sighed as he stared at the ceiling. I hate hospitals, he said to himself. Even though he was fine, the nurse wanted him to stay for observation for a few days. This had already made the blonde board out of his mind. So he only form of entertainment was counting the number of tiles on the ceiling. He had reached 367 when he heard his door open. He turned and saw a flash of blue fly toward him. He suddenly felt a familiar weight against his body and saw Tatanashi straddling him. Hello, Naruto, she said with a sultry smile. I missed you. Naruto smiled and tried to hide his blush, but unfortunately, it wasn't working. Hi, Tatanashi, he replied. What brings you here? She smiled and leaned in very close. Can't I come visit my favorite blonde? She whispered into his ear. Naruto went stiff at this while Tatanashi just smiled. She leaned in closer and pressed herself against him. Naruto tried not to lose his cool, but Tatanashi wasn't going to stop this time. My, my, she said with a smile. Don't you look hot? Why don't I help you cool down? She leaned in and used her mouth to slowly unbutton his shirt. Naruto could only watch in shock as she undid the buttons so very slowly. He could see how painstakingly sensual she was being with each and every button. He tried to think, but he couldn't stop looking at the girl on top of him and what she was doing. Suddenly the door swung open and a tall man with long, spiked, silver hair walked in. Hey, Bratwa, he started to say, but stopped as he looked at the pair. Tatanashi stopped as she and Naruto looked at the man. He just smiled and gave Naruto a thumbs up. I approve, he said and pulled out a notebook. Please carry on. Jiraiya, stop being a pervert, a woman voice said and Jiraiya was sent flying across the room. Soon a woman with long red hair walked into the room and looked at the pair. Hello, she said as she looked at them. 
Excuse me, miss. Why are you on top of my son? Tatanashi got off Naruto and turned to face the red head. Hello. My name is Tatanashi Sarashiki. It is nice to meet you, Mrs. Namikais, she said as Naruto watched the exchange. Kushina looked over Tatanashi with motherly precision. It is nice to meet you as well, she replied. Back to my original question. Why were you straddling my son? Tatanashi was silent for a moment. I was just helping him cool off, she said with a smile on her face that made Naruto blush. Kushina was silent for a few moments. I thank you for trying to help my son, but next time, make sure to do it in a room with a locked door, she said with a smile. That made Naruto fall out of bed. Naruto got up and back into bed, his mind spinning. Tatanashi watched this and giggled. She walked over to him and kissed him on his check. I'll see you later, okay? she said and left the room. Naruto watched as she left the room, his hand on his freshly kissed cheek. Kushina looked at her son and smiled. Sue, is there anything you would like to tell me? She said sweetly. Emo -um. Naruto shouted as Kushina laughed. It's just so easy to tease you, she said as she smiled. You're just like your father. Naruto smiled at the comment, but sighed as well. So what brings you here? Kushina walked toward the bed and sat down next to Naruto. Shifuyu called and told me what happened, she said, and Naruto nodded. I had to come and make sure you were okay. I expected as much, he said inside. It was a tough battle. I lost most of the freedom because of it. Kushina nodded and pulled him close. I'm just glad you're safe, she said as a few tears fell down her face. A few days later, Naruto was finally released from the hospital and allowed back to classes. Kushina had decided to stay, due to the fact that it was almost the end of term. Naruto sighed as he walked toward his IS hangar. He slowly opened the door and turned on the lights. Kyuubi saw him walk in and walked over to him. She had been looking over what remained of the freedom and the GN drives. Naruto bent down and picked her up. Hey girl, he said with a smile. Thanks for watching over the freedom, or what's left of it. Kyuubi just nodded as he scratched her behind her ears. He set her down on the work table and headed over to the computer. He watched as it started up and saw that the freedom was unsalvageable. He sighed to himself, wondering what he was going to do. Well, there's always my other designs, Naruto told himself, shaking his head. He hadn't put as much time into the others as he had the freedom, and they needed time in development before they were ready for use. Dang brat, you did a number on it, didn't you? A voice said from behind him. Naruto turned and saw Jiraiya standing over him. Hi, Arosinin, Naruto said, making Jiraiya facepalm. Would you stop calling me that? He shouted, red in the face while Naruto laughed. I will stop calling you that when you stop being a pervert and writing the crap you call books, he replied as he looked at the computer screen. I'm not a pervert. I am a super pervert, Jiraiya said with pride. Don't let any of the girls hear you say that, especially Shifuyu, Naruto said with a chuckle. Jiraiya looked at Naruto. So, it's Shifuyu, not Oromira Sensei, is it brat? He said. Having a special lesson with the teacher? Hee <laughs> hee. Naruto hit Jiraiya on the top of his head. Aero Senin, he shouted, then went back to work. Damn brat, Jiraiya said. Anyway, what's your plan on fixing the freedom? Naruto just sighed and turned to look at the remains of the IS. I have no idea, he said. I lost a lot of parts in the battle and was not able to recover them all. I still have my GN drives at least, but I have to build an entirely new IS to fit them. The meteor could barely hold the GN's power for an extended period, case in point. My entire system shut down in the middle of a fight. Don't you have other designs? Jiraiya asked, and Naruto nodded. I have tons, he said as he pulled up his designs folder. The only one that could work right now is a Sha. This design is specifically built to hold at least one GN drive. It's built for close range. Then why not build that one? Jiraiya asked. There are many things I need to test before I am able to even conceive of building it, Naruto said, as he went into IS engineer mode. First, I need to find a frame strong enough to handle the strain of the GN drive. Next, is to find the correct linkage and weight to power ratios to make it move. Then, there are the weapons which need to be tested to make sure they are safe for combat. Then get started, brat, Jiraiya said. You have all summer. Naruto sighed and knew he was right. This was his best option right now, but he felt as if it wasn't the right time for the Isha. His gut was telling him the freedom wasn't out of it yet. Damn it, Naruto shouted, causing Jiraiya to jump. I need some air, Naruto said and left the hangar. Jiraiya just watched him go before pulling out a notebook. Time to find the bathhouse, he said and headed toward the girls' dorms. Naruto walked along the waterside path and looked out on the ocean. 
He wondered what he could do about the freedom, but nothing was coming to mind. He kept walking and didn't notice someone fall into step with him. Narakuin, a voice said, getting his attention. Naruto turned his head and saw Tabane standing next to him. Hi, Tabane, he said. But before he could say anything else, she tackled him to the ground. Don't scare me like that, she said as she hugged him. I thought I had lost you. Naruto just sighed and stroked her hair. It would take a lot more than a rogue IS to take me down, he said. Well, the gospel came pretty close, she said and looked into his eyes. Well, I am still here, he said, reassuring her. Yes, you are, but the freedom is not, she said with a hint of sadness in her voice. It was a wonderful IS. Yeah, it was, Naruto agreed. So, what are you going to do now? she asked. Naruto just smiled. Well, first I'm going to ask you to get off me, he said. Tabane stood up and gave him a sheepish smile. Soru Narukun. Naruto smiled. It's fine, he said and looked out onto the sea. I really don't know what I'm going to do, he said. The freedom is too far gone to salvage, and it would take me months or even years to test and build another design. Tabane nodded. Then why don't you combine the freedom with one of your other designs? She said and Naruto looked at her with shock. That's it, he said with a huge smile on his face. I can take what is left of the freedom and combine it with the Ishia. This will allow me to keep the functionality of the freedom and use the power of the GN drives to create a brand new IS. Tabane, you're a genius. Tabane smiled. I know, but it's nice to hear you say it, Narakuin, she said. Naruto pulled her into a hug. He spun her around and then kissed her passionately. Tabane was surprised by the kiss and soon they broke apart. Naruto looked at Tabane and blushed. He didn't mean to kiss her, but he was caught up in the moment. Um, I got to go, Naruto said and ran back toward his IS hangar. Tabane watched him go and brought her hand to her lips. She smiled. She started to head back toward the dorms when the sound of a man in pain filled the air. She stopped for a moment and wondered who it was. Over by the dorms was a bloody and beaten Jiraiya laying on the ground. The marks of angry females marred his body. He was found by Hooky and the others, as they walked toward the dorms, from the bath, as was subjected to righteous fury. With Maya, Maya stood next to Naruto's dorm room. She wanted to talk with him, but hadn't had the chance since they had gotten back from the beach. She had been busy with her work and wasn't able to see him. She stood outside his dorm and pondered, whether or not, to go in. Suddenly the dorm opened, and red-haired woman stepped out of the room. She turned and saw Maya. Hello, Yamanda Sensai, she said with a smile. How are you? Maya was caught off guard. H, hello, she said. I, is your son around? Call me Kushina. Kushina said with a smile. And Naruto is at his IS hangar. He is trying to figure out what he should do about his IS. Maya nodded. Yes, it is sad about the freedom, she replied. He put a lot of work into that machine, only for it to get destroyed. Yeah, it was his pride and joy, Kushina replied. So. Has my son pulled any pranks while he has been here? Only one, but I was able to stop him, Maya said. Kushina looked at her in shock. You stopped on of his pranks, she said. I can't even do that. How did you do it? I really don't know. Maya admitted. He saw me and ran toward me, setting off his own trap. Kushina listened and smiled. I see, she said. The smile unnerved Maya and she smiled back. Well, I have some paperwork to file. It was nice talking to you. Maya said hastily and headed toward her room, only to run into a wall. Kushina watched this and smiled. He's going to have some explaining to do, she said, and started to walk toward the dorm entrance. I might be getting some grandbabies soon. A few days later, Naruto sat in his dorm working on his new design. He had combined the Ishia and the Freedom to create the Strike Freedom. He was happy he was able to find a way to keep the Freedom alive, but it wasn't going as he had planned. He was in the middle of trying to get the correct formation so he could get the GN drive in place as well as the wings, when the door burst open. Naruto Namikaze. Kushina shouted, making Naruto turn and looked at his mother. What did I do? Naruto asked, having no idea what he did wrong. Kushina gave him a stern look. You know what you did, she said. Come with me. Naruto just nodded and followed Kushina out of the room. They headed out of the dorm and toward his IS hangar. He wondered what he had done and went through his mind of all the stupid things he had done recently. Unfortunately, nothing came to mind. He had been too busy with school and other things to have done anything. What is it? Something I did before I left, and she getting her revenge after all this time, he thought to himself. He looked at Kushina. I am so dead. She opened the door too and motioned for him to enter. Get in, 
Shiorder and Naruto shook his head. No, he said and backed away. I have no idea what I did, but I'm sorry. Kushina looked at him and sighed. She grabbed him and started to pull him toward the door. Get in there. No. Naruto cried. I don't want to die. Stop being dramatic. Kushina shouted and tossed him inside. Naruto rolled across the floor and landed on his back. He sat up and looked around. The lights were off but were suddenly turned on. Surprise! A group of voices shouted, surprising the blonde. Naruto saw all girls standing there next to a table of food. Wah! Was all he could say as he got up off the floor. Cecilia walked forward and smiled. We all noticed that you were frustrated about your IS, so we decided to throw you a party to cheer you up. Yeah, Narakuin, it time to cheer up, Tabane said, with a huge smile on her face. Naruto smiled. Thanks, everyone, he said, as he saw all the smiling faces. This is great. Maya smiled. Glad you like it, she said and brought him a piece of cake. Naruto was about to accept the cake when he found a fork full in his face. Here, Maya said with a blush. Naruto blushed as well and took the cake off the fork, much to the ire of Cecilia and Tabane. She was about to feed him more when Cecilia walked over with another piece. Here's some more, she said with a smile, bumping Maya out of the way. Naruto smiled and ate more cake. It's great. Tabane suddenly tackled Naruto and straddled him. Let me feed you, Narakuin, she said with a sultry smile. She brought out a piece of Pocky. Naruto blushed as she leaned in, the Pocky hanging from her lips. He was about to take the other end when Tabane was suddenly knocked off him. Naruto could only watch as Tabane and Cecilia started to fight on the floor. Naruto just sighed and turned only to see Tatanashi standing before him. She smiled at him and wrapped her arms around his neck. It's my turn now, she said and leaned in, capturing his lips. Everyone watched in shock as Tatanashi kissed Naruto. Cecilia, Tabane, Maya, and surprisingly, Shifuyu watched this with anger. Kushina was smiling. She couldn't wait for grandbabies. Jiraiya had his notebook out and was writing as fast as he could. Tatanashi soon broke the kiss and smiled. Hope you liked your present, she said in his ear and walked toward the table. Naruto just stood there, frozen. He turned and saw the anger in the other girl's eyes. I am Sue dead, he thought to himself as they advanced on him. A few days later, Naruto sighed to himself as he rubbed his cheek. It still hurt from all the slaps he had received. It wasn't his fault that had Tatanashi kissed him. He entered his classroom and sat down. No one had arrived yet, so he was alone. Why are girls so confusing? Naruto asked out loud, as he waited for class to start. We're not confusing, a voice said, getting Naruto attention. He turned and saw Shifuyu standing at the front of the class. Oramura Sensai, Naruto said with surprise. I didn't notice you there. Shifuyu looked at Naruto. I just got here, she replied. An uncomfortable silence settled between the pair as they both tried to occupy themselves. Naruto was working on his design, while Shifuyu graded papers. They sat in silence as they worked. Naruto took a chance to glance at Shifuyu and couldn't help but admire her beauty. She was really a goddess in human form. Shifuyu noticed him staring and gave him a stern look. Anything interesting you're looking at, Naruto? She asked, pulling him out of his thoughts. Um, he replied. A blush spread across his face. I was just thinking about how beautiful you are. Shifuyu was taken aback by this comment. A small blush crossed her face that quickly disappeared. Please refrain from flattery, she said, and Naruto sighed. I'm sorry for telling the truth, he said, surprising her again. But, you are beautiful. Is it too bad to say it out loud? Naruto sat at his desk and sighed to himself. Why is this so dang hard? He shouted as he looked at his laptop. He had finished the initial design on the new Freedom, but there were still a few things that were not matching up. He sighed to himself once again and got out of his chair. It was almost summer break, and he wanted to at least have the designs done so he could start building when he got home. He sat down on his bed and laid back. Why is this not working? He said out loud, but no answer came. His vision was suddenly filled with red and smiled. He picked up Kyuubi from off his face and set her in his lap. He smiled as he started to slowly pet her fur, making her purr. You always know how to help me relax. Naruto sat on his bed, petting Kyuubi for a while until her heard a knock at his door. He got up and set Kyuubi on the bed. Coming, he called and headed towards the door. Shifuyu stood in front of him, her arms crossed around her chest. Naruto just looked at her with surprise. Oramura Sensei, what brings you here? May I come in? She asked and Naruto nodded, moving aside. She walked inside and looked around the room. 
It had changed much since her last visit, except there were IS parts all over. Sorry for the mess, he said as he looked around the room. I just have been busy. I can see that, Shifuyu stated as she sat down in the desk chair. Naruto took the chair across from her and smiled. So what brings you to my humble abode this fine day? I just wanted to see how you were doing, she said looking at the blonde. I'm doing fine, he replied but could tell there was more to the visit. But that not the real reason you came here, is it? Shifuyu sighed inwardly. Yes, that is true, she said and looked at the blonde. I came to talk to you about our recent encounters. Naruto looked at her with confusion. What about them? He asked. I think you have been out of line in your comments on my appearance, Shifuyu said making the blonde look at her as if she was crazy. So I can't give you a compliment of how you look? Why? He asked. This didn't surprise Shifuyu one bit. It is not proper for a student to look at a teacher and compliment her on her looks, she said making Naruto fall to the ground. Why not? He asked with a hint of annoyance in his voice. It is just not, she stated making Naruto face ban. He shook his head. That not an answer. He replied and Shifuyu gave him a stern look. A student job is to listen to the teacher and try to retain what he she is trying to teach. She stated while looking the blonde in the eyes. A student who falters his, her teacher is a disruption to the learning process and it makes it uncomfortable for the teacher. If you feel uncomfortable about me complimenting you, you could have told me to stop, he stated simply. Is that what you want? Yes, Shifuyu stated and Naruto nodded. I will try to keep it professional when we are in class, Naruto said. Shifuyu nodded and got up. Thank you, she said and headed towards the door. No problem, Shifuyu, he said as he opened the door. I see you around, and by the way you look stunning. Shifuyu looked at him with surprise. He said he would stop complimenting her. Naruto saw the confusion on her face. I said I would stop complimenting while in class. We are not in class so that rule doesn't apply and have a good day. Shifuyu stood outside the door and soon a frown adorned her face. That boy, she said and headed back towards her room, wanting nothing more than to use a bakken to beat Naruto into a bloody pulp. A few days later, Naruto sighed to himself as he finished packing his gear. School has just let out for the summer and her plan to head home and work on his new IS. He finally finished the design for the Strike Freedom and was happy with its overall design. He kept many of the original weapons from the Strike. He had added all the swords from Ashia, allowing him to be more effective as close range. The biggest addition was the high-energy particle cannon he had added to the chest area. As he looked over the design, he couldn't help but be happy. He was able to salvage most of the old freedom and planned on integrating most of the parts into the new IS. Unfortunately, he had to build a new frame for scratch. He sighed to himself as he packed the last box of parts and loaded them onto a pallet to be picked up later. That's the last of it, he said as he sat down and looked around the now empty IS storage area. QB walked over to him and wrapped one of her tails around his leg and tried to pull him along. He felt the pull and smiled. Okay, Q, I'm going. Naruto picked up QB and helped her in his arms and headed towards the tram area. He was excited to be going home yet sad at the same time. He was going to miss his friends and a few certain females. He sat down on one of the benches and waited for the tram lost in thought. It's going to be an interesting summer, he thought as he waited. I'm going to be building the strike freedom and working to improve the GN drive output and power distribution. So I probably am going to be working all summer. It is going to be kind of lonely without Tatanashi, Han, Cecilia, Maya, Tabane, and Shifuyu. Naruto was pulled out of his thoughts as the tram pulled up and he boarded. The door was about to close when someone rushed in behind him. Naruto turned and saw a breathless Tatanashi standing behind him with a large sweet case in hand. Safe, she said as she tried to catch her breath. Naruto looked at her and sighed before pulling a bottle of water out of his bag. Here, he said and held out the bottle of water to Tatanashi. Tatanashi took the bottle and gave the blonde a grateful smile. Thanks, Naruto, she said as she opened the bottle and drank the water. Naruto watched as some of the content spilled out of the sides and slowly made it way down Tatanashi form and into her clothes. He quickly looked away and chided himself for acting like a pervert. Tatanashi noticed that he looked and smiled. She walked over to Naruto and gave him a smile, Naruto. She said making him look at her. Yes, Tatina? He asked when he felt her wrap her arms around his neck and pressed herself against him. Can I rest on you? She whispered in his ear while he froze in place. I'm so tried from trying to make the tram. Naruto just nodded and Tatanashi smiled. She loved to make him freeze. Naruto machinkily lifted his hand and held onto the stabilizing bar while Tatanashi leaned against him. They rode the tram all the way into town and beyond, finally stopping at the end of the line which was the local airport. 
Naruto had finally came to his senses and was blushing up a storm as he felt Tatanashi press herself against her body. Why does she do this to me? He thought as he felt the tram come to a stop. Naruto sighed to himself in relief as he let his hand drop from the stabilizing bar. It's time to go, he said to Tatanashi, but she didn't want to let go. Tatanashi, I need to move. No, Tatanashi replied. This is too comfortable. Naruto sighed and didn't know what to do. The tram was going to head back to the school soon, and he didn't want to miss his flight. He looked down and saw Kyuubi using her tail to pick up one of his smaller bags and head out the tram. Naruto quickly grabbed his bags, as well as Tatanashi and held them in his arms. He then scooped up Tatanashi with his free arm, and he rushed out the door. He followed Kyuubi through the crowd, and soon they had exited the station and entered the airport. As he walked he failed to notice all the stairs he was received as he walked around with Tatanashi in his arms. He walked towards the terminal and flashed his IS Academy badge. This allowed him to get through security with little hassle, if he didn't have Tatanashi in his arms that is. One of the security officers help up his hand and stop Naruto. Naruto sighed and stopped not wanting to get into any more hassle. Yes, officer? He asked trying to mask the annoyance in his voice. Can you show identification for the girl in your arms? The officer stated and Naruto looked at him with annoyance. I do but I kinda can't get it. Naruto replied as his annoyance began to seep into his voice. I'm sorry for the incoveness, but I will have to see some ID. The officer stated. Naruto gave the officer an evil glare and tried to see which bag had her ID, but he couldn't find it. He looked down at Tatanashi and saw that she was asleep and knew she wouldn't be any help. Can't you cut me a break she asleep? He asked but the officer shook his head. ID is required or you cannot enter, the officer stated. Oh come on. Naruto replied with an elevated voice. I need to get going my flight is going to leave soon. Until I can see her ID, I can let you through. The officer replied. Suddenly Tatanashi yawned and lifted her head. Are we there yet Naruto? She asked and looked up at the officers. No, Naruto replied. They won't let us through without seeing your ID. But I want to go back to sleep. Tatanashi said with yawn as her eyes started to close. Just tell me where your school ID is and I can get it for you. Naruto said. Tatanashi nodded and whispered it into his ear. The officer watched as Naruto's face became as red as a beet. It's there? Naruto said with a bit of embarrassment in his voice. Tatanashi nodded. Naruto looked at the officer. Can you please let us through? I need to see her ID. The officer stated once again. Naruto sighed. Tatanashi, can't you give me your ID please? He said, and a sleepy Tatanashi nodded. She moved her hands and reached down into her cleavage and pulled out a small wallet. She opened it up and gave Naruto her ID. Thanks, he said, and she nodded and put the wallet back where she held it. While this was going on, the officer looked on with indifference on their faces, but on the inside they were surprised. Here, Naruto stated and handed them Tatanashi ID. The officer came out of his stupor and looked over the ID. He nodded and said, you're clear to go through. Thank you, Naruto stated and headed through the checkpoint. He looked at the clock and saw that he was going to be late, but he didn't know where Tatanashi was going and he needed to get her on her flight first. Hey to Tina, he said waking up the girl again. Yes, Naruto, she said as she rubbed the sleep from her eyes. Where your flight? He asked her with urgency in his voice. Oh, she said and pulled out her ticket from her pocket, much to the relief of Naruto. I departing from gate A32. Naruto nodded when suddenly had a ping of surprise, that where I departing from? He stated. Really? Tatanashi said with surprise that seemed rather faked. I didn't know. Naruto didn't believe her surprise one bit, but he didn't have time to dwell on it. Okay, let's go, he said and headed towards their terminal. They soon arrived as boarding had started. Naruto tried to set Tatanashi down, but she wouldn't have it. I'm still tired, she said and pulled herself closer to the blonde. Fine, just give me your ticket, he said. Tatanashi nodded and handed him her ticket. They pair soon boarded the plane and Naruto found that he was actually sitting next to Tatanashi on the flight. He looked at Tatanashi who just gave him a smile. He knew she had somehow made it so they were sitting together, but he didn't know how. He set her down in her chair and took his seat. Tatanashi rested her head against his shoulder and smiled. That was a fun, she stated as she leaned on the blonde. Yeah, Naruto answered back with a hint of sarcasm in his voice. Tatanashi seemed to not notice or just ignored his comment as she soon fell asleep on the Naruto. He looked at Tatanashi and smiled. He grabbed her blanket in the seat pocket and put it over her sleeping form. After the flight, Naruto stretched as he walked through the airport towards the entrance with Tatanashi beside him. 
She tried to get him to carry her, but he didn't fall for it this time, so she had to settle for walking beside him. They walked in silence, letting the world pass them by. They finally reached the entrance and Naruto smiled he was home. I'll see you later, he said to Tatanashi, pulled out a set of keys, and headed towards the parking lot. He reached the first row of cars and found a light blue Subaru WRX hatchback with the license plate FOXZZ. Naruto smiled and unlocked the car and loaded his bags into the trunk he was about close it when he saw a bag fly inside. He turned and saw Tatanashi standing there with a smile on her face. Ma'am, he said the confusion clearly evident on his face. Oh, I got a job working at Kanoha Industries, she stated with a smile. Naruto looked at her for a moment. When did this happen? he asked. Tatanashi smiled. Oh, a while ago, she said and opened the passenger side door of the car and got inside. Naruto just stood there frozen. Suddenly the sound of the car horn filled the air making him jump. He looked inside and saw Tatanashi giving him hurry up look. Naruto just nodded and got inside the car and they headed towards home. They traveled in silence and Tatanashi watched as the trees rolled past. She had to smile as she watched the flashes of green. She had to admit that having the main facility in a forested area was different but it provided a welcome change from other IS companies. They just had flat concrete facilities that had no personality. Kanoha on the other hand was surrounded by nature, and the workers seemed to enjoy it a lot. Naruto smiled as he saw the leaf symbol come into view. Home sweet home. Naruto stated with a smile as they pulled into the research complex. Tatanashi looked around with awe. It was a big facility and everywhere people could be seen working against the green backdrop. Everywhere there were different types of IS and IS parts that were being tested or developed. They soon arrived at the main building and pulled into the parking area. Naruto and Tatanashi exited the car and headed inside. They headed inside and Naruto led Tatanashi towards the main offices. He walked toward an office in the back of the room with a look of determination on his face. Tatanashi followed behind with a smile. As they passed a few desks someone called out to Naruto. Naruto, a female voice said. Naruto turned and faced a fair-skinned woman of average height and slender built with blue eyes and black hair. He face lit up. He rushed over and pulled the woman into a hug. Shizun, it's so good to see you. He said as he squeezed Shizun with all his might. It is great to see you too. Shizun stammered trying to catch her breath. Can you let go, can't breath? Naruto let Shizun go and gave her a sheepish smile. Sorry, he stated and Shizun just smiled at him. It's okay, she said. It's been a while since we last saw each other. Well, I have to go. Swanda needs me. I will see you later. Naruto watched as Shizen started to walk away. I see you later. He stated and she nodded. Tatanashi watched the exchange with interest. She smiled and wrapped her arms around Naruto's neck. Who was that? She asked Naruto. Naruto tried not to freeze as he felt Tatanashi press herself against him. That my sister Shizen. He stated. Your sister? Tatanashi said with a hint of surprise in her voice. I thought you were an only child. Naruto smiled. I am, he stated. Shizun is the adopted daughter of my grandmother Tsunade Senju. She's been with me since I grew up, so she is my sister. Oh, Tatanashi said as they started to walk again. They soon arrived at a large oak door with the name Kushina Namikaze on it. Naruto smiled and opened the door. Kushina sat at her desk review papers as Naruto and Tatanashi walked in. She looked up and smiled when she saw the pair and set down her work. Welcome home, Kushina said with a smile and pulled her son into a bone-crushing hug. I've missed you. Naruto was trying to breathe. Can, can't breath. He stammered but Kushina didn't seem to hear him. Naruto's vision slowly went black and he passed out. Kushina finally noticed that Naruto was out cold. Oh, H and O. She shouted and started to shake Naruto profusely. I sorry. Tatanashi watched this and giggled. She just knew that this was going to be an interesting. She watched as Kushina moved Naruto towards a couch on the side wall of the office and laid him down. She looked over Sun with a smile on her face before turning to face Tatanashi. Kushina moved towards her desk and motioned for Tatanashi to sit in the chair in front of the desk. Tatanashi did as directed and sat down. She watched as Kushina's expression changed from that of a loving mother to the eyes of a hardened businesswoman. Kushina looked over the girl in front of her and opened a file on her desk. She read over a few papers and then looked over at Tatanashi. I see you have the top grades in your class as well as the strongest pilot at the academy. Kushina said, looking Tatanashi in the eyes. The reason I brought you here is to test our improved model of the one of our older generation IS models. Tatanashi nodded and Kushina continued. The models you will be test are the following. First, we have the ZGMF X2000 Goof Ignited. 
This IS suit is equipped with the following MA, M757, Slayer Whip, Heat Rod, M181 SE, Dropner, 4 Barrel Beam Gun, MMI, 558, Tempest, Beam Sword, Shield, and M68, Caddis, 500mm Recoilless Rifle. Next, we have the GAT 04 Wingdom. This is a decanate of the strike. It is equipped with M2M5, Totus Grecken, 12.5mm Automatic CIWS, ES 04B Beam Saber, MK315, Stiletto, Rocket Propelled Anti Armor Penetrator, A52 Offensive Shield Type E, MK438, Slash B Dual Multipurpose Missile, Werger SA10, and M9409L Beam Rifle. Another feature of the Wingdom is that ability to mount striker packs. Lastly, you will test one of our news models. We'll be testing our lasted model, the SVMS-01 Union Flag. This is our lasted prototype. This suit is equipped with linear rifle, sonic blade, defense rod, and 20mm machine gun. Tatanashi looked over all the designs and marveled at how many IS she was going to test. She thought she was just testing one, but three was surprising. She was confused, though. She thought the strike was going to be their main focus. What about the strike? She asked Kushina. Kushina sighed, the GAT X05 strike is an extreme well-made machine, Kushina replied and looked out the window. Unfortunately, the material to produce the strike on a massive scale are very expensive, so it would be counterproductive to out business. The strike is being reclassified as a personal machine for Han Nohatok. Tatanashi nodded. Is there anything else you need, ma'am? Tatanashi asked. Kushina smiled. Nothing else, she said, except, no hanky-panky on the clock, got it? Tatanashi smiled. Yes, ma'am. She replied with a salute. Good, Kushina said as a warm smile spread across her face. I will have Shizen show you to your room. I expect great things from you. Tatanashi nodded and exited the office with a smile on her face. With Shifuyu. It had been a week since school had ended and Shifuyu had spent most of the time at her home. She had been review most of the test scores of the class and had finally settled on Naruto's. She looked at his face and sighed. He was the one person who unnerved her. He was just so different from anyone she had ever met. He was always smiling and carefree, only to be serious and cool when the time calls for it. She recalled the battle against the Silver Gospel and couldn't help but smile as she watched Naruto take down the IS with a nearly Detroit IS. He never gave up and always pushed forward. It was one of his more enduring qualities. That boy, she murmured as she set down his file. Why did he linger in her mind? Why was he so different? She sighed to herself and got up from her desk and headed out of her room. As she walked, she saw her brother Achika sitting on the couch surrounded by Hookie, Charlotte, Rin, and Laura. They were all trying to get his attention while he was completely oblivious to it all. Shifuyu decided it was better to head out than watch the scene go on. She headed back to her room and quickly changed. She finally left the house and headed towards the local bar. A good drink was always a good way to clear the mind, or cloud it, depending on a person's opinion. As she walked, she didn't notice someone walking towards her. Shifuyu, a voice said from behind. Shifuyu turned and saw Mia standing there with a smile on her face. Maya, Shifuyu said with her usual aloofness. Maya smiled. So what brings you this way? She asked her friend. Just need a drink, Shifuyu replied. There been a lot on my mind lately. Mind if I join you? Maya asked. It is always better to drink with a friend. Shifuyu nodded and the pair headed towards the bar. They walked in silence, each in feet own little world. They reached the bar and found a few open seats at the end of the bar. They took their seats and ordered, a friendly silence between them. Shifuyu looked at Maya and couldn't help but notice something different at about her. Ever since Nardo had came to the academy Maya had changed, it was a minute change but a change just the same. She had glow about her that Shifuyu couldn't pinpoint. She watched Maya as she took a sip of her drink and decided to question her. Maya. Shifuyu said, getting her friend's attention. Can I ask you something? Maya looked at Shifuyu and smiled. Sure. What changed? Shifuyu asked. Maya looked at her fire end with a look of confusion on her face. What do you mean? She asked. You seem different, Shifuyu replied as she tried to put it into words. You seem too different. I was wondering what changed. I don't feel different, Maya stated as she thought about it. I feel the same as I did before. Shifuyu nodded and started to think. The change started to happen when Nardo first came to school. Maya's face started to get a slight red hue to it at the mention of Naruto's name. This wasn't lost on Shifuyu, and she decided to press Mia about it. Did something happen between the two of you? She asked, and she watched Mia blush even more. Maya was silent as she tried to find the right words to say. She didn't expect for Shifuyu to bring up Naruto. It's all right, you can tell me. 
Shifuyu said taking another swing of her drink. Maya was quiet for a few more moments. We became close during the semester. She finally stated as she looked back on her encounters with Naruto. Close? Shifuyu said not showing any emotions. Maya nodded as a smile spread across her face. Yes, close? Naruto has something about him that makes me want to be near him. Maya said as she remembered her times with the Naruto. Shifuyu listened and couldn't help but agree with what Maya was saying. Naruto had a way to draw people to him. She's seen it with Cecilia, Han, Tatanashi, Tabane, Maya, and surprisingly herself. He was truly one of a kind. She pictured the Naruto in her mind and smile, a small hint of a blush on her face. Maybe I will pay him a visit, Shifuyu stated as she finished of her drink. With Naruto, it had been several days since Naruto had returned home, and he was currently held up in his personal research lab. He stared at his computer screen and looked over the blueprints of the Strike Freedom and smiled. He had everything in its proper place, and he was ready to start fabrication. He got up and headed towards the far side of the wall. On one of the tables sat QB lying next to a large pile of metals. He petted QB head for a few moments before pulling out a few pieces of lunge square pieces and walked over to the wielding station. Naruto liked to use more hand-on methods in building his IS. He always felt better when he had hand-crafted each part, screwed in each screw, and polished the out shell till it shined. It made him feel as if he was one with his IS. He grabbed his wielding gear and set one of the bars on the wielding table. Slowly, he turned on the gas that powered the wielder, and he pulled his wielding mask down to cover his face. He ignited the wielding rod and watched as the superheated flames came to life. He brought the superheated rod towards the metal bar and let the sparks fly. He slowly started cut the bar in half, and soon the sound of metal hitting the floor. Naruto smiled and continued his work. With Tatanashi. Tatanashi sat in the waiting room in her IS gear. It had been several days since she came to the facility, and today was the first day she was going to be able to pilot one of the IS she was going to test. She was excited. She had read over the specs for the three machines and couldn't help but be in awe of their capabilities. The Goof Ignited was a very durable IS. It was built to take a hit and didn't need to summon weapons to fight. All weapons were on the machine, and you were never unarmed. Next was the Wingdom. It was a watered-down version of the Strike, but with an experienced pilot it could take on any third generation with ease. The Striker Packs is what set it apart from the others, so it was very easy to change equipment to fit the situation. Finally, there was the Flag. This was by far the fastest machine of the three. It had a simpler design and relied mostly on its close combat weapons. It had a unique defense feature in its defense bar. This bar basically spun and blocked all the projectiles shot at it. A tech came in. We are ready for you, he said, and Tatanashi nodded. She followed the tech into the lab and saw the resting form of the goof ignited waiting for her. Its blue color shining in the dimly lit room. Its frame was a bit bulky, but it made up for it in armor. On the right was shield which held the beam sword while on the left was the whip. Tatanashi smiled and walked over the IS and placed her hat on it. She felt as the IS surrounded her and adjusted to her body. She looked around and saw that she was wearing a visor. She turned looked in a mirror. The goof's shoulders were rounded with a spike on top. The middle hugged her body and protected her all over. The legs were a bit bulky, but the extra boosters on the boots allowed for fast adjustments in battle. Finally, the headgear. It was a single band around her head with a spike coming out of the middle of the forehead. The visor covered the eyes, and the only thing that could be seen by the opponent was a large red eye. This is amazing, she said as she looked around the room. She turned towards the tech and smiled. So where to next? You are to head towards Area 3, one of the techs said. Your opponent is waiting for you. Tatanashi nodded and lifted off the ground and settled into a light hover. She was happy with the quick response of the goof and couldn't to really test its abilities even more. She entered the launch area of the Arena 3 and headed out into the field. She flew to the middle and waited for her opponent. Soon a flash of red was seen and AIS similar to the goof flew out. She looked at and saw the computer recognize it at Azaku. She zoomed in on the pilot and was shocked. Kushina was her opponent. Kushina smiled as she looked over at Tatanashi. Surprised? She asked. Tatanashi nodded. I didn't know you could pilot an IS. She replied. Kushina nodded. Yeah, most people don't know about it. She said. I was always the first to test when Minato was alive. Tatanashi nodded. Shall we get started? She said and lifted her rifle. Kushina smiled and did the same. Show me what you got, little girl. She replied and charged. Kushina charged forward. Her rifle leveled at Tatanashi. She pulled the trigger and fired a green laser blast. Tatanashi flew above the beam and returned fire with her rifle. 
Kushina dodged to the side and continued her charge. Tatanashi also continued to fire at Kushina, who weaved through the beams as they hit the ground. Tatanashi sped up her rate of fire, but Kushina still dodged. Tatanashi knew that if Kushina reached her, that she would be in a very bad position. Tatanashi fired her boosters and charged toward Kushina at full speed. Tatanashi pulled out her sword from her shield as she charged and brought it down toward Kushina's shoulder. I got her, Tatanashi thought, as she watched the blade fall toward Kushina's shoulder. She knew that the speed of Deason of the blade was faster than the speed Kushina could dodge. Kushina watched as the blade came toward her and smiled. Very good, she thought and continued her charge. As the blade was about to reach her shoulder, she activated her side boosters and spun around the attack, much to Tatanashi's surprise. Tatanashi's attack hit the ground. Kushina spun, grabbed her beam axe from her shield, and brought it around to strike at Tatanashi's back. Tatanashi saw the flash of the axe and brought her shield behind her, stopping the attack, but the momentum behind the strike made her slide forward a few feet. Kushina fired her boosters and followed after Tatanashi, bringing her axe down once again. Tatanashi pushed off the ground and flew into the air. She watched as the axe hit the ground and created a cloud of smoke from the force of the attack. She quickly switched to thermal vision and targeted Kushina. Tatanashi lifted her covered hand, aimed the finger lasers at Kushina, and fired a barrage of small beams. Kushina saw the warning flash across her screen, but it was too late to dodge and she was hit with the barrage. She flew a few feet back and watched her shield energy fall from 600 to 570. Damn, Kushina said quickly moving, as the next wave flew toward her. Tatanashi watched as Kushina flipped forward and brought up her rifle and fired in mid-flip. Tatanashi dodged, only to be hit by the next shot from Kushina. Her shield energy only dropped from 600 to 580 so she wasn't worried. Unfortunately, she didn't have time to think, when suddenly she saw a barrage of beam flying toward her. Tatanashi narrowed her eyes, started to dodge the blasts, and fired her own counterattack at the same time. Kushina dodged the counterattack, fired her main thrusters, and charged toward Tatanashi. Tatanashi started to fire beam after beam, trying to stop Kushina's forward momentum. Kushina held up her shield, blocked many of the beams, and pushed her thrusters to maximum. Tatanashi frowned. She brought her left arm back and let the rod whip fly. Kushina blocked the whip with her shield and charged straight into Tatanashi, knocking her back. Tatanashi flew back, but stopped after she activated her main thruster. Her shield energy dropped from 580 to 540. Tatanashi watched as Kushina didn't let up on her attack. Tatanashi flew toward Kushina, sword drawn, and bashed her shield against Kushina's. Kushina pushed her thrusters, trying to counter Tatanashi's forward momentum, but Tatanashi wouldn't have it. She brought her sword down toward Kushina's shoulder. Kushina deactivated her thrusters and used Tatanashi's forward momentum to retreat to a safe distance. Tatanashi smiled and let fly, the whip in her right wrist. She caught hold of Kushina's leg and swung her into the ground with all the force she could muster. She watched as the impact created a creator and waited for the smoke to clear to see the damage she had caused to Kushina's IS. Kushina laid on her back, assessing the damage from Tatanashi assault. Most of her armor was intact but her right foot joint was burned and would probably break if she put any weight on it. Her shield energy had dropped from 570 to 480. Kushina made sure everything else was still in working order and charged forward into the dust cloud. She drew her axe and burst out of the cloud. Tatanashi charged forward as well, as soon as she saw Kushina appear. Kushina brought her axe down, and Tatanashi quickly blocked with her shield. Kushina took advantage of her blocked sight and kicked Tatanashi's, shield forcing her down. Tatanashi frowned and pushed forward. She dropped her shield and unleashed both whips. She flung the right whip in a wide arc and brought it down on Kushina's head. Kushina flew back out of the range of the first whip but was grazed by the second. This burned her right shoulder. Kushina brought her shield up, blocked the whip attacks, and countered with a barrage of beam fire. Tatanashi dodged the beams and continued her assault with the whips. She brought the right whip in a side sweep, hoping to capture one of Kushina's arms. Kushina brought her axe around and threw it, much to Tatanashi's surprise. She dodged the axe, but it cut through one of her whips. Kushina pushed forward and rammed one of her spiked shoulders into Tatanashi. Damn, Tatanashi thought as she flew back her shield dropping from 540 to 530. Tatanashi charged forward and brought her remaining whip down toward Kushina. She was able to catch Kushina's rifle. Kushina dropped the rifle and watched it blow up. 
The shockwave hit her shields, dropping them from 480 to 470. She smiled. She is very good, she thought. I can see why she is the best in the school. Kushina charged forward and picked up her discarded beam axe and launched herself high into the air. Tatanashi blocked the attack with her shield, lifted her hands, firing a barrage of beams from her fingertips. The attack struck Kushina, sending her back and dropping her shields from 470 to 440. Before Kushina could retaliate she was hit with yet another barrage of beams, dropping her shields to 410. Kushina brought her shield up to block the third barrage and started to charge forward. Tatanashi swung her whip about and tried to catch Kushina, but her attack failed. Kushina stepped into Tatanashi and brought her axe straight into her side. Tatanashi felt the bite of the axe blade and watched her shields fall to 390. She tried to get away, but Kushina had wrapped her free arm around her head, holding her in place. She took yet another hit, and her shield fell to 250. Tatanashi was able to break Kushina's hold and flew back. Kushina smiled and pressed her attack. She charged forward, axe held high, only to receive a barrage of beams flying toward her. Kushina dodged to the side, allowing Tatanashi enough time to grab her discarded sword and charge forward. Soon the clash of blades filled the air as each of the pair tried to win. Tatanashi pushed off Kushina and swung her swords in a side swing. Kushina blocked with her shield and brought her axe toward Tatanashi's leg. Tatanashi fired her thrusters and raised high in the air, dodging the strike. She let out a small sigh of relief. That was a close one, she thought, but didn't have time to react as Kushina charged her once again. Tatanashi blocked with her shield and swung her blade in an upward slash. Kushina brought her shield up to her shoulder to block the attack and quickly swung her axe into Tatanashi's unprotected side. Tatanashi felt the bite of the beam axe and watched her shields drop to tin. She raised her hand and fired a point-blank range, beam barrage at Kushina, dropping her shields to 360. Kushina flew back a bit before throwing her axe. Tatanashi dodged but was clipped in the shoulder on the axe's return trip, dropping her shield to zero. Her IS slowly floated to the ground and shut down. Kushina floated down and joined Tatanashi on the ground. You had me going there, Kushina said with a smile. I can see I had you test our machines. Tatanashi smiled. Thank you for the praise, but I still lost, she said, and Kushina laughed. It is fine, she replied. I have one thing you don't have. Tatanashi looked at Kushina with curiosity, and that would be? Kushina just smiled. Experience, she stated and headed toward the changing area. I am glad I came here. Tatanashi said to herself, as she headed to change, with Naruto. Naruto sighed as he finished the last weld for the arm of the new freedom. It had been a slow process of making the frame, but he wouldn't have it any other way. He had finished one of the shoulders and was currently working on the right arm. He had finished the upper arm and arm joint when he decided to call it a day. He sat down his wielding tools and quickly took off all his gear. QB walked over and rubbed herself against Naruto's leg. He smiled and picked her up. Hey girl, he said as he petted her, much to the fox's enjoyment. She licked him and gave him a smile. Let's go, her expression said and Naruto laughed. Okay, we're going, he said and headed out of his lab. He closed the door and entered the lock code, sealing the room. He walked quickly through the halls and out into the open air. He smiled as he saw the sun set behind the trees. He passed many of the workers, greeted the ones he knew, and finally arrived in front of a large house at the back of the complex. This was his home, the house he had grown up in. He set QB down walked up the steps, pulled out a set of keys, and opened the door. He sighed as he closed the door behind him. I'm home, he called, letting the sound of his voice echo in the hallways. In the kitchen, Kushina voice replied. It had always been like that. He walked into the kitchen and smiled. Kushina was at the stove making dinner, and her cat stood beside her. This cat was as unusual as Kubi. It had two tails instead of the usual one. Kushina stated that everyone in their family attracted unique animals to themselves. The cat's name was Nibby and was Kubi's best friend. Kubi saw Nibby and gave a yip to get the cat's attention. Nibby looked up, jumped off the table, and walked over to the fox. She stared at Kubi for a moment before turning around and walking toward the living room. Kubi followed with a swish of all her tails. Naruto walked over and looked to see what Kushina was cooking. He leaned down. It smells great, he said, much to Kushina's delight. Of course it does, she stated with confidence. I made it after all. Naruto nodded. Of course, mom, he replied and gave her a kiss on the cheek. He sat down at the table and sighed. 
He activated the hologram computer on the table and inserted his flash drive so he could work on his IS designs. This was their way of doing things ever since Minato died. Kushina moved to the counter and started to chop some carrots. Oh, Naruto, she said getting her son's attention. We are going to have a guest over for dinner. Can you be a deer and pick them up for me? Naruto nodded. Sure, he replied. Who is it? Oh, just a new employee, she said with a wicked smile that Naruto couldn't see. They're staying at the company apartments, he asked. Of course, she replied. Now, they are expecting you at seven, so don't be late. Naruto checked the time and saw that it was 5.30. Okay, got it, he said and continued to work on his designs. Kushina came over and dropped the flash drive on the table. This is the combat data of the goof we got today, she said. Can you look it over and see what the text missed? No problem, he said, saving his work before switching drives. He quickly loaded the data and started to read. He was surprised by how well it did in its first battle, and saw that many of the designs they had incorporated had worked very well. He didn't notice any problems except that the whips were easily broken. You need to get better material for the whip, it was destroyed too easily. I noticed, Kushina said. Naruto looked up at her in surprise. Kushina smiled. Who did you think cut it? Mom, Naruto said with a sigh. You said you wouldn't test the new IS. I'm not testing them, she said giving him a smile. I am fighting them. In what? He asked. You know what? She said. So the Zaku is still running? He asked. Well, Dad did know how to build things. Kushina was silent for a moment. Yes, he did, she replied with a sad smile. Naruto got up and gave his mother a hug. They stood in silence as they remember their missing family member. A few moments later they broke the hug and went back to their previous tasks. No words were need as they continued. Soon the clock reached 6.45 and Naruto had stopped working. I'm heading out, he stated and Kushina nodded. Naruto headed out to the back, hopped into his car and drove toward the entrance of the complex. Kanoha Industries owned most of the land around the complex and had built a town for all the workers. Many of them lived in the apartments in the town. He pulled up in front of the complex and parked the car. He stepped out and looked around. Where could they be? He said to himself, when he felt a pair of arms wrap themselves around his neck. Well, it seems I've found my ride, said a familiar voice. He turned his head and saw Tatanashi behind him, her usual sultry smile on her face. I missed you. Naruto tried to stay calm, but Tatanashi pressed herself against his back. Let's go, he managed to say, and let a quiet sigh of relief. As he felt Tatanashi release her grip, he tried not to stare at her as she walked. She wore a short sleeve blouse with the top two buttons undone, showing a respectable amount of cleavage, a short frilly skirt, and a pair of pigeon-toed high heels. He opened her door for her, and she got in the car. Quickly he shut the door, got to his side, and drove off toward home. They drove in silence. Tatanashi just smiled and moved her head to the music, playing on the radio. Naruto glanced over at her and couldn't help but smile as he watched her dance. Tatanashi saw him staring. She gave him a sultry smile and continued to move to the music. Naruto turned away and tried to focus on driving, but Tatanashi seemed to want his full attention. Her moves seemed to accent her natural beauty. Fortunately for Naruto, they had arrived back at his home and he was able to get out the car before something happened. Naruto opened Tatanashi's door and helped her out of the car. She stepped out and stumbled a bit. Naruto caught her and held her close. They stared into each other's eyes and didn't move. Naruto couldn't help but get lost in Tatanashi's dark red, eyes that seemed to shine in the night. Tatanashi was feeling the same as she stared into Naruto's sea blue eyes and slowly their face inched toward each other. Suddenly the sound of a door opening filled the night and the pair separated. They turned and saw Kushina standing on the porch, a smile on her face. Am I interrupting anything? She said with a knowing smile. Naruto looked at his mom and sighed. Tatanashi just giggled, but on the inside, she was a bit peeved that their moment was interrupted. Kushina just smiled and headed into the house, and the pair followed her inside. Naruto, can you show Tatanashi to the living room, please? Kushina asked. Got it. Naruto called back and led Tatanashi through the house. Tatanashi followed Naruto through the house and couldn't help but look at all of the pictures hanging on the wall. She wasn't able to really focus on the pictures. Soon they reached the living room and Naruto led her to the couch. So, enjoying your time here? Naruto asked her. Tatanashi smiled and scooted closer to Naruto. Of course, she said as she rested her head on Naruto's shoulder. It is a lot of fun. Yeah, Naruto replied with interest. What have you been up to? I just did my first test of the goof she said with glee. That is a great machine, 
he said with a smile. The whips are a unique weapon and its mobility is great. Yeah, it was a fun, Tatanashi replied. The funny thing was that I fought your mother. Naruto nodded. Yeah, that sounds like something she would do, he said and Tatanashi giggled. She is lively, she stated as she snuggled closer to Naruto. Naruto stiffened for a bit, but soon relaxed. It felt nice having Tatanashi so close. She infuriated him to no end, but he had to admit she was nice to have around. She always seemed to lighten his mood with her actions. So, how goes the new IS? Tatanashi asked, breaking Naruto out of his inner thoughts. It's going, he said with a small sigh. I still have a lot of work ahead of me. I bet Tatanashi replied. There's a lot involved in building an IS. Yeah, but it will get done, Naruto said with confidence. Tatanashi nodded and wrapped her arms around Naruto. I know it will, she said and Naruto smiled. They soon settled into a comfortable silence, with Tatanashi leaning into Naruto while he stroked her hair. A few moments later Kushina walked in and smiled. She observed the scene and didn't want to disturb it at all, but alas, they needed to eat. Dinner ready, she called, making Naruto and Tatanashi turn their heads toward her. Tatanashi slowly got up and off Naruto. Naruto stood up and they headed into the kitchen where they enjoyed a nice dinner filled with laughter and smiles. Naruto smiled as he watched Tatanashi and his mother getting along so well. It brought a smile to his face as he sighed in content. Kushina noticed that everyone was done with their food and smiled. Naruto, can you be a deer and do the dishes? She asked him with a smile. Sure, he replied and got up, collected the dishes and headed toward the sink. Kushina smiled. Thanks, she called and stood up. Tatanashi and I will be in the living room, so join us there when you're done. Got it, Naruto replied and continued his work. Kushina grinned and turned toward Tatanashi. So, who wants to see pictures of baby Naruto? She asked. Tatanashi smiled. I would love to, she said, and the pair headed toward the living room where the photo albums were kept. While they headed toward the albums, Naruto felt a sudden chill. He knew something embarrassing was going to happen, but he didn't know what. A little while later, Naruto entered the living room, a towel in his hands. He finished the dishes and decided that he should check out what the girls were doing. As he walked into the living room, the sound of giggles filled the air. He wondered what was going on and looked in. Kushina and Tatanashi were seated on the couch, hunched over the coffee table. A feeling of dread soon came over Naruto as he got closer. Kushina and Tatanashi were looking at his baby pictures. Kushina pulled one out and smiled. This was when he was three, she said and sighed she looked it over. He didn't want to take a bath so he was running away. Oh he's so cute, Tatanashi replied as she looked over the picture. Naruto just looked on in horror and quickly took the picture from Tatanashi's hands. Emoem, Naruto said, embarrassed. Kushina turned and smiled. Oh, lighten up, she said as she took the picture back. We're just having fun. Naruto gave her an evil look. Key word, you're having fun, he stated. I rather not look over embarrassing photos of myself. Tatanashi turned and gave Naruto a pout. But you look so cute, she said, making him blush a little. Yeah, you're so cute. Kushina said as she pulled out another picture. I can't help but show them off. Naruto just sighed and shook his head. You could have warned me first, he responded. Kushina smiled wickedly. Where's the fun in that, she said. Naruto just shook his head. I can't win, can I? Naruto said. Of course you can win, Kushina said with a smile. But not when it comes to showing off my cute baby boy. Tatanashi smiled. He was so cute then, she said and slowly got up. She walked over to Naruto and slowly wrapped her arms around his neck. Now he's as a man, a sexy one at that. Kushina watched this and sighed. Take it outside, she said making Tatanashi giggle and Naruto blush. Yes ma'am, Tatanashi replied, dragging Naruto toward the door. Why? Naruto tried to say, but Tatanashi had a tight grip on him. Kushina just watched the pair and smiled. Close the deal boy, she said as she watched them disappear out of sight. I want grand babies. With Naruto and Tatanashi, Tatanashi dragged Naruto into the night air and smiled. It was a clear night and the stars were out. So, shall we continue? She said and wrapped her arms around Naruto's neck. Naruto blushed and quickly got out of her grasp. Um, how about I show you something amazing? He said. Tatanashi looked at him with wonder. Really? She said with a sultry smile. Is it something hard and stiff? Naruto blushed. No, he said quickly. Just follow me. Tatanashi just giggled and wrapped her arm around Naruto's arm. Lead on, she said. Follow me, Haim, Naruto said, and Tatanashi giggled.
They headed toward the forest and soon were surrounded by trees. It was quiet and dark as most of the trees blocked out the light of the moon. Tatanashi looked around the forest and saw only darkness. She was a tough girl but a dark forest with no sound was something that would freak out, even the bravest person. She turned and looked at Naruto who seemed perfectly at peace with the current surroundings. She wondered if he came out here a lot at night, but didn't have time to ponder as she heard a howl fill the forest. She moved closer to Naruto. It's okay, he said with a smile. Nothing is going to hurt you. You promise? Tatanashi asked. Of course, and I never break my promises, he replied making Tatanashi brighten up. Good, she said as they continued. I'll hold you to it. Naruto just nodded as they continued on their way. Tatanashi watched as the trees started to thin and moonlight started to illuminate the area. They soon arrived at a clearing with a beautiful lake and waterfall. She watched in awe as the water danced in the moonlight. This is amazing, Tatanashi said with wonder. I'm glad you like it, Naruto said leading her toward a small dock near the side of the lake. This is my own little slice of heaven. I come here when I need to get away from everything or just want to relax and take a swim. Tatanashi smiled when she heard the word swim. Slowly a plan formed in her mind, and she turned toward Naruto. So, shall we take a dip? She said, much to Naruto's surprise. A dip? Naruto said not liking where her line of thinking was headed. Yes, a dip, Tatanashi stated once again. I love to swim, and the water looks wonderful. We can't just come here and do nothing. Naruto tried to say something when Tatanashi put a finger against his lips. Please, she said and pressed herself against him a bit. Naruto tried to resist but soon his willpower failed him. Damn pretty girls, he thought before slowly nodding. Yay, Tatanashi said and gave Naruto a big hug. Naruto blushed and hugged her back. They broke apart after a few moments and soon Tatanashi was undressing. Naruto quickly looked away and heard a splash. He turned and saw Tatanashi already in the water. Come on slowpoke, the water feels great. Naruto just smiled and slowly undressed until he was only in his boxers. He headed to the beginning of the docks and slowly started to run toward the other end. He reached the edge and jumped off with all his might. Tatanashi watched as he flew through the air and landed in the water with a large splash. Naruto quickly surfaced and was hit in the face by a splash of water. He turned and saw Tatanashi giving him a big smile before splashing him again. He smiled, dove under the splash, and tried to retaliate, but Tatanashi had swum out of his range. Catch me if you can, Tatanashi called and swam away from Naruto. Naruto smiled and headed for Tatanashi at full speed. Soon a splash war was on. Every time Naruto would get close to Tatanashi, she would splash him and swim away. Naruto smiled and dove deeper into the water. Tatanashi looked around and couldn't find Naruto. She moved with caution, not wanting to be caught, when she suddenly felt something grab her and pull her under. She struggled as she felt a pair of arms wrap around her. She burst to the surface and was greeted by a smiling Naruto behind her. Caught you, he said with a smug smile. No fair, she said with a pout and Naruto laughed. You said I had to catch you, he said with a smile. And that is what I did. Tatanashi smiled. That you did, she said, slowly turning around and wrapping her arms around Naruto's neck. Now it's time for your reward. She leaned in and slowly captured Naruto's lips. Naruto soon returned the kiss. They floated in the water the moonlight illuminating their kiss. They soon broke the kiss and Naruto couldn't help but look at Tatanashi, the water dripping down her face. He leaned in and captured her lips once more. A while later, Naruto entered the house alone. After the lake, he had driven Tatanashi back to her place. They rode in silence, but it was a welcomed silence. Tatanashi ended the night with another kiss. Now he was home and in a slight daze from the recent events. Kushina heard him come in and looked over at him. She saw his bewildered state and wondered what had happened. Naruto, are you okay? She asked him. He nodded absent-mindedly. Did you have fun with Tatanashi? She said, and again Naruto just nodded. She sighed to herself and walked over to him. His father had gotten like this sometimes when they were dating, and it seems as though it ran in the family. She only knew of one way to break the days and proceeded to walk over to her son. Time to wake up, she said sweetly, and slapped him across the face. Naruto opened his eyes wide and held his cheek. What the hell? He said as he came out of his stupor. Kushina just smiled. Oh good, you're back, she said. He gave her a confused look. What do you mean I'm back? He asked her. Also, why did you slap me? I slapped you out of the Namake's days, she said. Naruto looked even more confused. 
The Namikaze days happens when a Namikaze man does something intimate with a girl he likes. They go into autopilot, and the only known way to break, it is pain. So you had to slap me, he grumbled. You could have pinched me. It wouldn't have worked, she said with certainty. How do you know? he asked, and Kushina shook her head. Your father, was all she said, and Naruto let the matter drop. Naruto sighed and sat on the couch. Kushina sat across from him and smiled. So how did the rest of the night go? From the days I can, surmise it went well? Naruto just smiled. It was nice, he said. With Cecilia. Cecilia stood on the porch of her home, bored out of her mind. It had been few weeks since the end of class, and she had nothing to do. She had returned to England at the request of her government. They wanted to review the current combat data of the Blue Tears. As a result, she sat on the porch doing absolutely nothing. I wish Naruto was here, she said to herself as she looked out into her garden. Who's Naruto, and why do you wish he were here? A female voice said from behind Cecilia, making her jump a bit. She turned to see a girl with dark brown hair, green eyes, wearing a maid's outfit with a large belt strapped around her waist. This was Chelsea Blackett, Cecilia's maid and best friend. They had been together as far back as Cecilia could remember. She had stayed in England to look after the house while Cecilia was at school. Chelsea looked at her friend and repeated, Who's Naruto? Cecilia smiled. Just someone from school, she said and headed back inside. Just someone from school, Chelsea said with a hint of mocking in her voice. Are you sure? Yes, Cecilia said quickly trying to think of a way to change the subject. Oh, that's too bad, Chelsea said with a sigh. What does that mean? Cecilia said, slowing turning. If he's just someone from school, then he means nothing to you, Chelsea said with a smile. How do you know it's a he? Cecilia stated, trying to throw off her maid. Chelsea smiled. I watch the news, she replied. There are only two male pilots at your school, and they are Ichika Oromura and Naruto Namikaze. Cecilia frowned. I mean, if he's just a classmate, you must be after Ichika, so can I have Naruto? You can't have my Naruto. Cecilia shouted at the top of her lungs. Cecilia looked at her maid and saw that the cat was out of the bag. So he's your Naruto? Chelsea said with a mischievous smile. When did this happen? Cecilia was silent for a moment before explaining everything that had transpired over the last semester. Chelsea listened and took a few notes. This is great, she thought to herself as she listened to Cecilia's story. She's finally found a guy she likes. All she needs to do is bag him. First we need to get to him as soon as possible. Cecilia stopped talking and Chelsea nodded. So, shall I get the bags packed? She asked Cecilia. Cecilia looked at her in confusion. Pack the bags, she stated. Why? To visit Naruto, of course, Chelsea replied. Cecilia blushed. We cannot just barge in on him uninvited. It's not proper, Cecilia said. Chelsea just stood up. We're not going uninvited, she said, and started to leave the room. We are taking the blue tears to Kanoha Industries for an upgrade. Cecilia looked at Chelsea in shock. What? Really? Yes, really, Chelsea said with a grin. Let's get going. We have places to go and boys to woo. Thank you for watching. If you liked our video, please hit the like button, subscribe for updates, and follow our Twitter, info in description. Credits go to the story's author, with details below. Don't miss out on our other content. Click on the suggested video for more stories and adventures. We appreciate your support and look forward to seeing you in our next video.